Hey Craftaholics, welcome back to Making the Cut. I'm Megan Ryan and today we're going to try a little experiment. So I have been told you cannot sublimate on Dollar Tree coffee mugs. Reasoning because they do not have a poly coat on them. So I have a Cricut mug. This is the Cricut brand mug here. Showing it to you upside down, that's never good. Um, this is what Cricut recommends you using anytime you're using infusible ink. It has a nice poly coating, straight walls, and you can see it's got some really good quality. All right, so we have a Cricut mug. I've also grabbed just an Amazon basic um, sublimated mug. So this one has no, uh, no brand affiliated with it. Um, this is just from one of those cheap bulk stores. It has a very similar coating. So if I compare the two, they look very similar. I think the Amazon one's a little bit bigger. Um, but you can tell um, inside, look at that. It's not the best quality in there. So it's got some little raised areas. Um, I'm not really sure what that is, but it looks like it was on there when they went to poly coat it. So we've got that. Um, but then I also have a Dollar Tree mug. And just to test and see if it will actually come on it or not, um, I also added, you can see there, I, it says, I love you. Um, and that is just my own poly coating that I've added just in that location. So we're going to test and see um, if it's true that you cannot sublimate on a Dollar Tree mug. If you can't, then there should be no color on the rest of this, but possibly should stick to the poly coating that I painted on myself. We'll give it a try. I don't know. Um, Cricut brags that it is dishwasher safe and um, food safe, obviously, microwave safe as well. So we'll see what we think about that. We're going to test it out. So um, before I do that, I will have to convert my t-shirt press into a mug press. I'm going to be using infusible ink, which is Cricut brand sublimated paper, essentially. Um, now that I have my own sublimated printer, I don't use that as much as I was, but before that, that was my go-to. I was using it all the time, um, and I, I still have a whole bunch of it, so we're going to use that for our experiment today. I have seen many videos on how to convert this, it's a 2421C combo heat press machine. Um, here's a picture of it. And it is currently $214. When I was looking to order it, it was $138. At the time, that was about the same price as a Cricut heat press, the, the largest one. And I just didn't think it was cost effective for me to spend that money on just the press when this one came with a t-shirt press, a mug press, a plate press, and a hat press. So it's got all the attachments to it. And it was just a couple, $10 I think more at the time. Now inflation, everything's going up, but at the time, this was a much better deal. Never looked back. This is actually um, one that my parents of my students purchased for me for Christmas. And it was just so sweet. They got with my husband. My husband was looking at my uh, save for later files on my Amazon. And so he gave this to them and then they are actually the ones that purchased it for me. So thank you so much, my previous branch hands. I love y'all. 
and I use this all the time. This has been just one of the biggest tools in my craft room. So, to convert it, the easiest way to do it, you just move this out of the way, and it's got this cord right here. You're just going to unscrew that and pull, and that disconnects it from the power source. So now, when I turn this on, this will not heat up, okay? So I'm going to add my mug press here. So this is the mug press that came with it, and it has its own little power source. So I'm going to just put this on the same base here that would have used my heat press. And then I just pop this in there, just like the other side. All right, and then I just screw that back on. That's it. So now when I go to turn it on, I'm going to um, do that just like I was doing with my normal t-shirt press. Um, it does take a little bit longer from what I've heard to do the mug press, but I'll show you in just a moment what we do. And I'm back. All right, that was so much easier than I was expecting it to be. So let me show you what I did. And then I'm also going to um, unveil. I have not looked at these yet, so we will see how they turned out. Um, I can tell just by looking at the rims of these that the Dollar Tree one did not work out as well as I had hoped. So we will see once we remove that what we actually ended up getting. Um, so what I've done, I took a 12 by 12 piece of infusible ink. I used this set here that is called uh, Pattern Ceramic Dot Rainbow. Okay, so I use this one up at the top. That's the design that I chose. Um, but this is, can we get you in focus? Let's see here. Here we go. Um, this is the one that I used. Okay, so we're using this top one. Um, what I noticed is when I went to put these on, if I was making this professional, I would go into Design Space and use an actual template and cut the exact shape that I need. Um, so you can notice that I had to overlap it and use the, oh, let's get back and focus here. Do, 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 do. It's tracking me, not my mug. Let's see. I don't know. Is that in focus? So um, we're going to see about... Um, what it actually looks like, but make sure you're using heat transfer tape. It will melt if you don't use heat transfer tape. Must be HTV tape. Um, not HTV, HT tape. Um, so I did overlap it. I tried to cut it and get it into those um, grooves here. When I went to do the Dollar Tree mug, because it didn't have those nice straight walls, um, I ended up having parts of it that have no design at all. So this entire front part here. There he is. You can see this whole top has no design on it. So sorry about the focus issues. Um, so we'll see what became of that one. But I put them into the heat press for 300 seconds. That's five minutes and it was 400 degrees. So I did all of those same temperature, same time. So we're going to unveil. Um, after you pull it out of the heat press, you do have to let it cool because it is very, very hot. Um, the handle did not get heated up, so I was able, 
if you can see how it slides in and then I just press that up and it slides back out. So the handle, since it did not get hot, I was able to remove that without having any kind of protective um, gloves or anything. So let's unveil. This is the Amazon design. So we're going to remove all the tape on it. And there we have it. I'm trying to focus on it. There he goes. Okay, so we have a beautiful design there. Sorry, it's wanting to autofocus on me. All right, so this is the Amazon design. Looks very, very nice. I like that a lot. Again, with um, if I was using a template, I would avoid this part. So I will definitely go to having the um, design space to actually cut out the size that I need, shape, and everything using a template, okay? So we've got that one. Now this is the Cricut. It's changing its focus again. Okay, so this is the Cricut mug. So we're gonna peel this one off and see how it turned out. Use the exact same paper. Um, it might look a little bit different because it did have like a fade on it. So the Cricut one. There he goes. So we have, that is the Cricut mug. This is the Amazon mug. So Amazon and Cricut. If I can get it to stay focused. <laughs> It's tracking me instead of the mugs. All right, so both of those turned out very nicely. Again, because I didn't use a template, I have the same issue that I had with the Amazon mug here. So I would definitely, if I was going to sell these, use a template. All right, so now let's try the poor Dollar Tree mug. I had high hopes on this one, guys. I was really hoping it was going to work for me. The Cricut mugs are so expensive, and the quality of this Amazon bulk one wasn't what I was hoping. So, I really was hoping this would work, but I can already tell this guy, this guy's not, not there. Oh no, that's interesting. Okay, so um, it did not stick very well <laughs> to the outside of the Dollar Tree mug, but it did stick extremely well to the poly coating that I added. Unfortunately, it also stuck the paper to it. So, that might not be a good alternative. I'm gonna see if I can get all this paper off of it. I got it off of the word you. Interesting. So, Dollar Tree mug, not gonna work. Um, you can see, here's the outside of the mug. Looks pretty crummy. So that was that same design that I used over here. Did not stick. Um, the part that I used the coating, you can see there part of the word U. Um, but the paper stuck. Focus! 
All right, so you see how the paper stuck to it. Um, it did stick to that poly coating that I put on there. Um, but then you've got all this other junk too. So unless you're planning on, I don't know. I, I wouldn't suggest the Dollar Tree mug with poly coating either. So had high hopes. Was really hoping this one was gonna work for me. But it looks like definitely stick with what is used for sublimation. Um, I try all kinds of different blanks all the time and usually they work. So I thought we'd give this a try. I highly suggest using the Amazon sublimating things over Cricut. Um, the Cricut mugs, a two pack, this size, $12.99, okay? So $6.50 a mug. If you were trying to go sell this, no one is going to go and buy a $12 personalized mug. Okay, because I mean, you got to make a profit, right? So I do not suggest Cricut mugs. Um, leave a comment if you would like to have a countdown of Cricut materials that I use and enjoy and Cricut materials that I don't use and will never buy again. Because um, I got those. Uh, so I, I wouldn't suggest wasting your money on Cricut brand mugs. I'm not sponsored by Cricut. I love Cricut, but you know, it's not worth the money when I can buy a dollar mug at Amazon and get the same level of finished product. I mean, this these look really comparable. Um, I would probably try and find one that does have a better quality um, inside. So maybe I might spend a little bit more, but the fact that I can get bulk cups for a dollar a piece, um, that's going to be much more efficient if you are going to sell these or make them gifts or whatever you're planning on doing. Um, leaning towards the Amazon mug. So, I hope y'all enjoy this video. Y'all have a wonderful rest of the week. And um, when I come back, we are gonna be working on some things for my students because it is almost that time for school to start back. So I'll be getting back into my classroom and we need to work on all the things classroom related so I will get that for y'all next week. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed rest of the day and see you next time. Keep making. Congratulations you made it through the whole video and now you get some bonus content. So here's an update. I washed that Dollar Tree mug and now isn't that exciting? Um, most of the uh, extra sublimated junk washed right off. There is a little bit of um, some speckling, but I kind of like it. It's an interesting look. Um, but I was able to use a toothbrush and scrub off all of the um, paper that was stuck to this. And so now I have this hand-painted looking design. Um, and it's sublimated. Is it gonna last forever? No, it will probably peel off. But for a last minute little gift for grandma, have your kids paint with polyurethane, whatever. <laughs> and um, it, I think it could be some really cool stuff can come out of this. Um, you know, let me know if you try it and what you might think of. I'm thinking maybe baby footprints or um, whatever for, for grandma's first grandchild. Who knows? Possibilities are endless. But Dollar Tree with a poly coating added, it works.